Welcome everyone. What we're going to do today is we're going to discuss what a normal distribution is, what it means for a random variable to be normally distri distributed, and how you calculate probabilities for the value of a random variable based on the fact that it is normally distributed when it is. All right, now, I need to make sure, first of all, that you know what it means for a random variable to be normally distributed. And I want to make sure that you understand the circumstances under which that occurs. It is called normal for a reason, and that's because, well, it's something that occurs quite frequently. Okay, so here's an example to kind of illustrate that and get you thinking. Suppose you were to count the seeds in each watermelon in a watermelon patch. What would you expect the distribution for the number of seeds to look like? Now, when I'm asking what would you expect the distribution to look like, suppose this watermelon patch had 500 watermelons or 2,000 watermelons. What would you expect to be the number of seeds that most watermelons would typically have? That's what I mean. Now, I'm sure you're watermelon experts and have that exact number in mind. I don't, but I think this makes sense. Wouldn't you expect that most watermelons would have close to the mean number of seeds? All right, I'm going to draw a histogram for this for a distribution, just making it up, but I think intuitively it'll make sense to you why it would probably look like this. All right, so just watch. Now, in the histogram, we're going to have a number line that displays the number of seeds per, or in a watermelon, and then the vertical axis is going to be a number line that shows the number of watermelons that have that number of seeds. All right, well, frequency, I'll just label it as because I don't have a lot of room to, to label right there. So how many watermelons would have that? Now, I'm not going to give you exact numbers, but what I am going to do is I'm going to start kind of in the middle. Let's say that you have the mean value mu right here. Well, you would expect that the majority, or maybe not the majority, but more watermelons would have approximately the mean number of seeds than any other number of seeds. And then as you look at how many watermelons would have a little bit more than the mean, well, you still have a pretty high frequency of those watermelons. How many watermelons would be exceptionally more, have contained an exceptionally larger number of seeds than the mean? Well, that's going to get fewer and fewer and fewer, right? And same thing as we go to the left. You'd expect there to be plenty of watermelons that have just a little bit less than the mean, and then fewer that have exceptionally less than the mean as you go. Now, does that distribution make a little sense to you? This is what a normal distribution looks like. It's a distribution in which the data is perfectly symmetrical and centered around the mean value. All right. And normally, what we will look at is what's called the normal curve, which is not a histogram, but it's the shape of the histogram. Can you imagine this histogram kind of looks like this shape right there? You might have heard this referred to as a bell curve before. It's also called the normal curve. That's the kind of thing we're looking at. And it just happens that naturally random variables tend to take this shape. If I was talking about the number, the heights of the trees in a forest, you would expect that most of the trees would have about the mean height, and then you would have fewer and fewer trees the larger the height that you're referring to or the smaller the height that you're referring to. Um, same thing if you were talking maybe about Cheerios and the diameter of each individual Cheerio. Um, they have an idea of how, how, long, how much they want it to be and you would expect most Cheerios are close to that mean diameter but you know you would have a few that are larger and a few that are smaller and it would take this basically normal curve shape. All right, normal distribution is a very important thing to analyze because it occurs in many random variables. Now, the next thing I want to do is teach you a little bit of notation. All right, if a random variable x is normally distributed, the way that we notate that is this. We say x is approximately normally distributed and then we have to tell a couple parameters and I'll explain what these parameters are but though you might recognize them by the symbols that I'm using that should really be more like this 
You remember similar notation whenever we would say a random variable is binomially distributed? And when a random variable is binomially distributed, there were two important parameters that we cared about. We cared about how many trials there were, and we cared about what the probability of success was. Those are the things you need to calculate binomial probabilities. With normal probabilities, it turns out the things that you need are the mean, and so that's mu, and you need to know the standard deviation. Now, sigma is standard deviation. Sigma squared, you might recall, is variance, all right, but it's really the standard deviation that we care about. All right, now, we've already talked about how in a normal distribution, we assume that the highest frequency of the data values occurs at the mean. And so if the mean is right here, you can see that that's kind of where the highest frequency of values occurs. Now, nah, that's an ugly mute. Hold on, let me fix that. And then after that, what we tend to look at with a normal distribution is if a data value is above the mean or below the mean, how far is it above the mean or below the mean? And the way we measure how far it is above the mean or below the mean is based on how many standard deviations away from the mean that it is. All right, and so I'm going to put a few of those up here. Let's say that this value is one standard deviation above the mean. And trying to get that to be vertical. And then let's say this is two standard deviations above the mean and three standard deviations above the mean. And I'm going to put the same things below the mean. Now, a side note before I label the, how many standard deviations each of those lines represents above or below the mean, Whenever we're talking about how far above or below the mean uh, data value is, how many standard deviations away it is, we will use what's called a z-score to represent that. And z just typically is, how, is the number of standard deviations that a data value is from the mean. And the numbers that I'm going to label in red then would be the z-scores for a particular things. So that would be, if z is positive 1, that means the data value is 1 standard deviation above the mean. If z is 2, 2 standard deviations above, and so forth. And then if z was negative 1, that would mean it's 1 standard deviation below the mean. You kind of get the idea. Good. Now, I'm also going to talk a little bit about properties of a normal distribution. When we're calculating probabilities in normal distributions, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be calculating the area under a specific part of the curve. Now, that area will correspond with the probability that a data value is within a certain number of standard deviations for the mean. And it happens to be a fact that in a normal, normally distributed data set, that if you try to see how many data values would be one standard deviation or less away from the mean, okay, so that whether it's above or below, 68% of the data values will always fit within one standard deviation of the mean. Okay? Now, that means that area is equal to 0.68. The total area under a normal curve is equal to 1. So if you fill in the whole thing, that corresponds with 100%. Now, if we're talking about two standard deviations away from the mean, then that number becomes larger. It turns out that 95% of data values are within two standard deviations of the mean. Now, again, that would be the shaded region right there that would actually have an area of 0.95, but it's going to get really cluttered if I try to shade everything I'm trying to show you right here. 68% right, of data values are within one standard deviation. 95% are within two standard deviations of the mean, and 99% of the data values fall within three standard deviations of the mean. All right, so almost every data value fits within three standard deviations of the mean. If anything ever has a z-score that's greater than three or less than negative three, that means that it is exceptionally large or exceptionally small compared to the mean. Only 1% of the data values in a normal distribution ever fit that description. All right, now that seems a little bit vague to you maybe right now. Hopefully not. Hopefully it's pretty clear. But anyway, those are some facts about normal distributions. Now let's go ahead and see how you calculate probabilities with normal distributions. So, ah, we actually need to talk about the standard normal distribution because this is what we're going to focus on today is what's called a normal standard distribution. And a normal standard distribution 
what we do is we say that a random variable z is approximately normally distributed with a mean value of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. Okay, a standard normal distribution is a very useful tool for us. Um, so, remember your mu is the first number there, and then the second number is your standard deviation squared. Now, 1 squared, is, well, the square root of 1 is 1, so that means our standard deviation is 1 as well as the variance being 1 in a standard normal distribution. All right, so there our mean would be 0, and this would be 1, 2, 3. These aren't just z-scores, although they, they are corresponding with z-scores as well. Okay, that's what's happening in a standard normal distribution. Now, other normal distributions could have a mean of, say, 205 and a standard deviation of 10, which would mean that this would be 215, that would be 225, 235, and so forth. You'll see that. But let's see how we calculate probabilities using standard normal distributions. All right, if we're given that a random variable z is normally distributed with the mean of 0 and a variance or standard deviation of 1, then, all right, we know that's a standard normal distribution, and you ought to be able to find the probability that a data value is between two certain numbers. All right, and here we're going to find the probability that a data value will be between 0 and 2. Now, when we actually calculate the probabilities here, we're going to be using our calculator to do that. It's got some commands built in that will help you calculate probabilities based on normal distributions. All right, and the command that you're going to be looking for is one called the normal cumulative distribution function, or normal CDF for short. Now, the way you get to that normal CDF is the same basic way that you got to the binomial PDF and CDF that we we're using with binomial distributions. You're going to go to on your TI-83 or 84, you're going to choose the second distribution option, the DISTR, and then the second option there is normal CDF. And just like when we used binomial CDF and PDF, there are parameters that you must input so that your calculator knows how to calculate or what you're trying to calculate the probability of. All right, and here's how those parameters work. You're going to have to input four values every time you use normal CDF. And the first two values I'm going to call Z1 and Z2. And you have to put a comma between them. And what I mean by Z1 and Z2 are these. So I don't want to change that to x1 and x2. Because I don't want to imply that those parameters have to be z-scores, though they can correspond with it. All right, so x1 and x2 then represent the lower boundary and the upper boundary for the range of values that you're trying to find the probability for. So in this case, then, we would use 0 for our lower boundary and 2 for our upper boundary because we're trying to find the probability that a random variable z is between those two values. All right, then the other two parameters that you need to enter in for the normal distribution are the ones that are given in the notation right there. You need to enter the mean and then the standard deviation for that normal distribution. In this case, that's going to be 0 and 1. So here's exactly what you're going to type on your calculator to answer this particular question. All right, you're going to choose normal. You're going to say that probability is equal to the normal CDF of 0, comma, 2, upper and lower boundary, or lower and up, then upper boundary actually, 0, 1. That's the mean and then the standard deviation. And then just hit enter and your calculator tells you what that probability is. And you see that's about 47.7%. Now, let me try to put this in perspective based on things we've already talked about. I'm basically saying that 47.7% of the values are between 0 and two standard deviations away from the mean. Because if a standard deviation is one, well, this means two standard deviations away. Now, didn't we say over here that 95% of the data values were within two standard deviations of the mean? And what we were talking about was just this half of that. So it makes sense that it would be about 47.5%. We said it's 47.7% actually, right? All right, so that does tie into what I've already taught you there. Great. Now, let's find the probability that 
z, that random variable z, has a value that's less than negative 1.5. Or in other words, we're trying to figure out what's the probability that the data value is fewer, sorry, is uh, negative 1.5 standard deviations below the mean, or it's smaller than that. We're still going to use normal CDF. But the question here is, what do we use for our lower boundary? We can see that we want values less than negative 1.5, so we know our upper boundary is going to be negative 1.5. And we already know the mean, and we know the standard deviation, but what's going to be our lower boundary? Well, if you're saying that a value could be anything less than negative 1.5, doesn't it go all the way down to negative infinity? However, you can't type in negative infinity into your calculator, most likely, and so what we're going to do then is we're just going to pick a really, really small number, and we're going to say that basically represents negative infinity for us. Whenever you need a, you're trying to find a value that's just less, the probability that something is less than a number like negative 1.5, for your lower boundary, what I suggest using is simply negative 1 times 10 to the 99th power, which in calculator notation is negative 1 e 99. But of course, remember, don't write down on your IB exams the calculator notation, okay? Now, type that into your calculator. Let's see what the probability is that a value would be one and a half standard deviations below the mean or that it would be smaller than that. All right, and that turned out to be relatively small. To three significant figures, it's about 6.68% of the data values that are negative one and a half standard deviations below the mean or further. Well, really just further than that. All right, great. One more example to do here in this video, and as you might guess, here's a scenario where we're trying to find a probability that the random variable z has a value that's greater than a certain number, greater than negative 0.4, in fact. And we're going to do a similar thing with the boundaries here as we just did in the last example. Here, we don't know the upper boundary. All right, we know our lower boundary is negative 0.4, and technically, if you're thinking about numbers that are bigger than 0.4, you know, that goes all the way up to positive infinity, doesn't it? So theoretically, infinity is our upper boundary. But just like before, we can't type in infinity, and so what I would suggest you use whenever your upper boundary is infinity is just use positive 1 times 10 to the 99th power, all right, the 1 e 99 in your calculator. And so the probability that z is greater than negative 0.4 is about 65.5%. All right, at this point, you ought to know what it means for a data value to be normally distributed, and you ought to know how to work with standard normal distribution in order to calculate the probability that a data value is within a certain number of standard deviations of the mean or is greater than a certain value or less than a certain value. Thanks for watching, and we're going to work with non-normal standard distributions in the next video. See ya.